What do you call fake spaghetti? An impasta. Today, I'm going to recap a 2010 action comedy film called, Red. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins in a house somewhere in Cleveland where Frank Moses lives. Frank is a former black ops CIA agent who lives alone and is always lonely. Every month, he tears up his pension checks and reports them to the General Service Administration. He can communicate with his GSA officer representative, Sarah, in this manner. Frank is already attracted to her despite the fact that they have never met. During one of the calls, Frank informs that he will be in Kansas next week, and Sarah is waiting. One night, an assassination squad arrives at Frank's house and attempts to kill him. He kills three of them inside and he knows there are more outside. However, Frank's experiences as a CIA agent make it easy for him to kill every single one of them. Frank's phone is tapped, he is assuming, Sarah will be targeted too. He then go to her apartment in Kansas, breaking into her room and pack her stuff. When Sarah arrives, she scared and shocked, because someone she doesn't know inside her apartment. Frank says that she is in danger, people who try to kill him will try to kill her too. But Sarah refuses to go with him, so he kidnaps her and putting a duct tape in her mouth, then takes her to his car. In another occasion, William Cooper, a CIA agent, planning the accidental death of a man. Cynthia Wilkes, his superior, assigned him a mission of tracking down and killing Frank. She claims that this is a top secret operation involving total black ops. Meanwhile, to find out who is hunting him, Frank went to New Orleans to see Joe Matheson, an old friend and CIA mentor who now lives in a nursing home. Before he had Sarah imprisoned in a hotel room, Frank brings Joe parts of assassination squad fingers to trace. Joe gives him the first hint when he tells him that the same squad was responsible for the murder of a New York Times reporter just a few weeks before. After eventually escaping the hotel, an agent posing as a police officer tries to kidnap Sarah, but Frank arrives just in time to save her. Then William follows them. Using the police car to his advantage, Frank deceives the cops into detaining William and flees with Sarah. They're now heading to New York City to look for more clues by paying a visit to the family of a murdered reporter. Frank discovers a clue that leads them to a hit list. The list is hidden away in a book in a university library. Except for Gabriel Singer, a pilot cargo, all of the people on the list are dead. Frank receives tragic news regarding Joe from the nurse at that same moment. Later on, they then see Marvin Boggs, a former associate of Frank's. Marvin has become overly paranoid and totally nuts. Soon after Frank hands him a hit list, Marvin explains what happened, explaining that all of the targets are linked to a Guatemalan operation. They're now working with Marvin to continue the investigation. Meanwhile in the CIA headquarter, William is searching for Frank's file, which has the words, red, retired, extremely dangerous, printed on it. William now knows that Frank was one of the best and the most effective black ops CIA agent. Gabriel, a pilot on the list, is found in an Alabama airport. He explains that the mission involved extracting a person from one of Guatemala's villages, and that all of the village's people were slain. Gabriel is shot by the helicopter-borne machine gunner before he can say the name. After a fierce gunfight involving machine guns, RPGs, and other weapons, Frank, Marvin, and Sarah are able to flee. Even the crazy Martin uses his weapon as a baseball bat to blow out the enemy. Frank decided to enlist the help of Ivan Samanov, an ex-secret Russian agent. Ivan agrees to help him in exchange for a favor. Frank has finally obtained the information he requires to infiltrate the CIA headquarters. Frank pretended to be a general, while Sarah pretended to be a nuclear physicist. There, Frank is requesting a Guatemala mission report from Henry, the archive record keeper. He respects Frank so much that he simply offers him the file and informs him that William was searching for Frank's file just a few days earlier. Frank confronts William inside the headquarters, and the two fight, as Sarah sits in the waiting room reading an upside-down magazine. After long fighting, Frank got shot in his shoulder and seriously injured. Frank sets fire to the building and blows out the door, pretending as a firefighter to distract the guard and allow them to flee. Marvin is already in the ambulance to pick them up, and surprisingly Joe who was thought to be dead suddenly appear from the car. They then proceed to the eagle's nest, where Victoria Winslow lives, where she cures Frank's wound and eventually joins the team to assist in the mission's continuation. They track down Alexander Dunning, an arms dealer and defense contractor, due to the Guatemala file. While Victoria and Sarah keep watch outside, Joe poses as a buyer and enters Dunning's house with Frank and Marvin. They interrogate Dunning after they have eliminated the guard inside the house. 
Lieutenant Stanton was involved in the Guatemalan extraction mission, according to Dunning. Stanton is now vice president, and he has ordered the assassination of all mission personnel in order to conceal the truth that he massacred village population. The FBI and CIA have already surrounded the house, and they have no easy way out. On the phone, Frank informs William about the vice president's treachery, but William is skeptical and attempts to negotiate Frank's surrender. After a brief debate, Joe exits the house, posing as Frank, but is fatally shot by an unknown assailant. Because of Joe's death, they have enough time to flee the house while Victoria's cover them. They are extracted by Ivan. Sarah, on the other hand, slips, falls from the forest, and is captured. Later, Frank calls William and threatens to kill William's family as a warning to William not to harm Sarah. Frank also left a Guatemala file for William to review. The squad is now planning to kidnap Vice President during one of his fundraising events. As a distraction, Ivan makes everyone in the room panic, while Victoria uses her necklace to lock the primary door, forcing the Vice President and Secret Service to move to the secondary door, where the team is waiting and shooting them. Ivan detonates a bomb in the limousine. Meanwhile, Victoria is shot in fight and tells Marvin to leave her because she is no longer useful. Ivan, though, appears unexpectedly and helps her. Frank impersonates a limo driver and approaches Stanton outside the building, before eliminating the Secret Service and leaving only the two of them. The next day, Frank contacts William and requests that Stanton be exchanged for Sarah at the Evanston power plant. Surprisingly, Dunning, Cynthia, and William show up as well. Later, they discover that Alexander Dunning and Cynthia are the masterminds behind everything, with Vice President Stanton serving as their puppet. Dunning then shoots Stanton. Cooper disgusted with Cynthia's corruption, so he pretends to arrest Frank, and shoots Cynthia. Martin and Victoria kill Dunning's bodyguard from above. Then Frank quickly punched Dunning in the throat. Marvin also shoots Dunning to ensure his death. William Cooper and Frank Moses have become friends. By declaring that he can manage this now, William allowed the team to go peacefully. In the car, Ivan remind Frank of his favor about stole nuclear from Moldova. But Sarah eagerly insists on coming along for when Frank asking her to join. At the end of the movie, a few months later, Frank and Marvin are fleeing Moldovan troops with a stolen nuclear device. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy hit the like button and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. You should watch the full movie, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more video like this.